Welcome to Foxhole Symphony, a podcast about the transformational value of men in authentic community. In our Foxhole, men are equipped to build relationships that foster belonging, accountability, and growth. Stop believing the lie that you can thrive in isolation and instead join us on the journey from broken to whole. Hey everybody, Chris here, and I'd like to welcome you back to the Foxhole Symphony podcast, where the relationships are authentic and the fruits they bear are belonging, accountability, and growth. Today, Steve and Mark are joined by a very special guest, Ray Ryder of Kaizen Incorporated. These men are diving headfirst into the concept of Kaizen, a Japanese business philosophy of continuous improvement. Let's listen in to see how the boundaries of these proven principles from Kaizen are harnessed to bring victories into our personal lives. Welcome back to Foxhole Symphony. We're glad to have you with us. And uh, I'm Sarge, your co-host here with my brother, Mark. Good morning, man. Hey, bro. Great to see you again, as always, here in the Foxhole. How did you get the sunny seat? There you are with the, I, the I, morning sun I, shining a, on your it's, face. It's amazing. Would you take a picture of me? Okay. Would you, would you take a picture <laughs> of the sun in my face so that we can All we right. can maybe post it and just... You know, because this is this is my. I this wish the sun for you too. would sit there all day and just be uh, on on my face. May, may yes, right, <laughs> Lord, would yeah. you just shine <laughs> upon my face all day today? I need it deeply. Amen. Um, so, hey, we're excited about this topic this morning and a really special guest. We were talking this morning about really a challenging topic for me, which is one of the reasons I'm excited. I'm cautiously excited about it. I'm also a little hesitant because I know how badly I need this to be a topic in my life right here, right now, this morning, today, (laughs) because my heart is heavy. And as I look at um, my own life in this topic, this area of present moment leadership, and um, you know, we're going to talk about where our will and God's will intersect mm. with this really special guest. So let me introduce him. Who uh, is it? Come on. I'm going to tell you, a really <laughs> special person in, in our lives. So this morning, we've got with us Ray Ryder. And, you know, Ray is, he, he's, a, he's an entrepreneur. He's a businessman. He has, an owner, uh, he has a, 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 a business. He's the owner of Kaizen Incorporated, which is a, a training, consulting, and personal development company uh, he began a couple of decades ago. And... Uh, Ray is, he's a passionate guy. He's passionate about awakening and inspiring people to see and do what's possible in their lives and in their workplace. And that connects so deeply with some of my passions, Mark, you know this about me, that that is one of the things that I love to see people thrive and flourish and to watch that transform organizations so that organizations can transform uh, and thrive and flourish as well. But he wants people as individuals and as part of organizations to fully realize their God-given potential in all that they do, Cool, which is just awesome. Yep. Um, so prior to creating his own company, Ray spent a couple of decades with American Express financial advisors. Um, but one of the most incredible things about Ray, I think, is you know his family. Just Ray is a family man. He's happily married to Julie, uh, his wife of over 40 years. Praise God. How much over 40? <laughs> How many years, Ray? Uh, well, actually, just a couple of months. Okay. So, okay. So literally <laughs> 40 years in a couple months. We awesome. celebrated 40 years in July. Yes. Hallelujah. Amazing. Wow, and, and together, they have five boys, and they have three daughters-in-law. And get this. You ready for this? What? And this is going to be his profile picture, uh, I think, on the Foxhole Symphony. Uh, so look for this. 16, soon to be 17 grandchildren. 17. Yes. He, he has a football team. It literally. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Almost exa- both sides. Exactly. We have a football team. We've got cheerleaders. We've right. got it all. Bench coach. So. Yeah. Amazing. And so right. they, they reside in the great state of Kansas. I've had the opportunity to lead with Ray on a Mark Men weekend in Kansas. Uh, Ray has been involved in the Mark Men for Christ ministry for a number of years. He's a senior co-leader and he's the director of leadership development internationally and just faithfully serves the men locally in this ministry, in his community, um, as well as traveling internationally to support men 
all over the world uh, as they seek a life of transformation and freedom. And so, Ray, it is so good to have you in the foxhole, brother. I am uh, I am overjoyed to be in the foxhole with you, brother. So uh, um, I feel safe. I feel excited and thrilled and uh, just excited to see what the God would do at this time we have together. So awesome. I think it's great. We've never had an octogenarian on either. Or someone who's married 40 years with 17 grandkids. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, the, the interesting thing, the, the, the other trivia about that is um, the oldest just turned 11 um, June 30th. So if you do the math, we, uh, okay. we average a grandchild every four and a half years. There, so you, there you go. Four and a half months, four and, four and a half, half months. months. Sorry. Right. Right. Four and a half months. And, uh, uh of the 16, we have uh, 12 boys and six, uh, five girls. Yeah. Or, I, excuse me, four girls. Yep. And you guys have a, a family gathering, like a full family gathering. I think, do you do oh, that yeah. ev- every year? Like we're, oh, ev- we, we are so richly blessed because um, this is very unusual in today's world. Every single one of those. Um, so when we have our family together, that's, you know, the number's 26. So we have 26 to, to, to feed. Um, <laughs> so, but they all are within 30 minutes. Okay? What? So we, Wait, we see them every, often. Everybody, every all 26 are within 30 minutes? Exactly. Yep. So we get the the thrill of seeing them often so you know sporting events uh school events uh pool parties during the summer at our neighborhood pool um we uh we see them often so uh you know 11 years ago was kind of when they all started coming we uh made a decision you know we talk about present moment leadership and discernment and choices i made a choice at that moment um to take Fridays off, not schedule any appointments, you know, unless there's an exception. And for seven years, we had anywhere from three to seven grandchildren at our house on Fridays. And it was grandparent (laughs) Friday. And, um, that was, uh, again, a lot of hard work at times, but boy, looking back at the pictures and the memories of that was amazing. Then they started going to school and their schedules got a little bit more, more crazy, but, uh, we kind of have a new generation. Uh, last Friday, we had four over and um, had a blast. So uh, that's a big, big part of, you know, we talk about unfettering and um, using your God-given potential, but that role is a, a very important role for me. Yeah. Ray, quick digression. Of the 12 uh, grandkids that are boys, grandkids that yeah. are boys, how many are yes. Ray's? How many are how many named are Ray? Ray? Yeah. Oh. Zero, none. Okay, I'm just because you could have quite a line, right? Ray Junior. Oh yeah, yeah Ray, Ray the third. Ray I'm the sixteenth. Right. right, I'm Raymond James, <laughs> the thirteenth. Right. right, just curious. Sorry, I, I, that's right. just how my no. brain works. No, there's one one um, that had a uh, that has my middle name has Ray or Ray Feel is actually my full you know baptismal name as as his middle name. So we we in our fortieth wedding anniversary celebration. We have this beautiful picture, um, and Sarge, you may have seen it because I think we have it yes. on Facebook. But but uh, we numbered each of the kids in a shirt from one to sixteen, and then they all had a color related to their family. And I look at that picture, and it literally just brings tears to my eyes because it's just um, I can look at that and immediately feel peace and gratitude and mm. abundance um, for God's grace. So. Um, that's just very, very proud of that and, um, very blessed. Awesome. It is. It's a beautiful, Hope you get 20. It's a beautiful picture for sure. I have seen it. Well, Ray, you, you have, um, you know, you've had success in your life, um, as a family man, um, just somebody I see as a man of integrity, uh, a leader in your community and a business leader. Unfortunately, most people don't identify as much with our successes as our, our failures or our struggles. So I want to just start there. Would you, would you just share maybe a story of struggle in your life? Yes, absolutely. And I sort of smile as you talk about and use the word successes because, gosh, we could do a whole podcast on you know, how do we define success and sure. what does that really mean? <laughs> yep. You know, um, True. so I think about 
you know, just at a high level, am I, you know, performing, am I behaving, and am I, am I making choices, which we'll get into, I know, a little bit about um, being my very best in each and every moment. And so, yes, there have been times I have not been my best. Mm. Um, I have not had that success. So we talked about, you know, the joy of, of children and grandchildren. Well, you know, the first kind of leap of faith I think about or challenge was, you know, our family grew very quickly, you know, uh, right after we got married. So I had, we had our first boy, all boys, by the way, all five of our children are boys. Mm. And so we, we got that gene going. The writer name is going to carry on quite a while. <laughs> sure um, is. <laughs> Check the box. So, uh, and then 17 months later we had twins. And so, wow. um, it's like, oh my gosh. And, you know, I, I was challenged because Julie and I lost that opportunity because we became immediately parents and the weight of the responsibility to provide, um, you know, not being able to do kind of that freedom when um, we were early, you know, in our, in our newlywed period, if you will. And we were just, you know, in diapers and um, trying to make things meet and just a ton of fear. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my desire, one of my core desires is, safety and security and immediately um you know i had the yoke if you will of the pressure to provide and perform and so mm. that identity which again we may talk about that a little bit later too but that identity that i took on became you know very much tied uh mark and sarge to what i did made or produced and you know i was so focused on that human de doing versus a human being. <laughs> and that just sucked the joy, if you will, out of, out of parenting, um, work, our marriage. Um, it's just, it was a survival. Mm. That so resonates with me. Right? Oh, Sarge, gosh, you I, I, me? We just started and I just had lunch the other day and I was talking about that. I'm a human doing, I, I still mm -hmm. str that struggle for me is part of that bias towards action that we'll talk about. In a, well, in that's, a few that, well, that's, yeah. that's where my head went. I'm, I'm yep. listening. I'm going, yeah, that was me this week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man, what a what a struggle, which is again why knowing what we were going to be talking about so challenged and excited for right. us. Right. <laughs> well, um, and the and the key I would say related to that just to kind of plant this seed is, you know, are we conscious about making those choices back then and have the maturity? Again, I just was reacting often from a place of fear and survival versus knowing that, okay, this is my reality. We've got a lot of children. Um, I, I, we, you know, my wife has never needed to work outside of the home. Um, she's a full-time mom during those, you know, for our whole life basically. And so um, if I can make that a conscious choice, it just changes everything. You know, you were mentioning, Sarge, you're in the sun. It's like, if, if, if we make those choices and we're conscious about it, then all of a sudden we're in the light versus in the dark. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh boy. There's a lot to talk about there. huh? <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so be, before we dive too deeply into that and, and I'm excited to, um, I want to just talk about the, your, your, your company, your consulting firm, Kaizen. Yes. Kaizen means continuous improvement. Yes. Right. I know that. Cause I looked yes. it up. I'm like, what the heck is yes. Kaizen? I don't, I've never heard that. It's, it's not an Italian uh, word. I'll tell you that. No, um, no. So, so how it's has a Japanese, it's Japanese. A Japanese philosophy. Okay. And little backstory. So um, as you introduced me, 20 years with American express financial advisors, this is the eighties and the nineties. You uh, may recall some of the listeners who recall TQM, total quality management. Oh, yeah. All the rage. Absolutely. Yep. And uh, striving to get the Malcolm Baldridge Award. Um, and so, in all of that, Edwards Deming was a big part of that Six Sigma. Yep. One of the key principles of the Japanese philosophy of TQM was Kaizen. And that notion of continuous, ongoing improvement. And you still see that word a lot in. Um, lean manufacturing or those lean disciplines that, you know, if I can shorten, you know, moving this box from A to B and I can make an incremental improvement, a 1% improvement, okay, you guys, when you're kind of giving me a little bit of background on on this podcast, 
it's like moving one inch closer. I don't need to move yep. a yard or, right. you know, a football field. But if I can just move one inch closer, 1%, that's what Kaizen is all about. And so I was driving to Peoria, visit my uh, sister who was living there at the time, listening to, it wasn't a podcast back then, but it was an audio book or something. And I heard that word and I go, that's it. I mean, it's just like, that is what I want to name my company because I believe so much in that philosophy of continuous ongoing improvement in all aspects of we do, of we do, of what we do. And then most importantly for me, and I know for you guys and probably all, all those listening, it's about our God given potential. Okay. It's about doing improvement aligned with God's will and being our very best for him and the talents and gifts that we've given that he's given us. So yeah, it's a great, uh, it's a, me up. <laughs> no, I love it. It's a great connection for me. Um, first of all, I know when you're talking about back in the eighties and nineties, I was with AT&T um, and some other long distance companies. And w we actually had a, a Japanese segment of our business and Kaizen yeah. was, I, I didn't know, I didn't look it up, but I remember hearing that then. <laughs> yes. And now today I'm in IT solutions sales for the last forever. And CICD is one of the hottest acronyms in my business. It stands for continuous improvement, continuous development. Mm. And it's all ah. about, it's the harmony between the developers of software solutions and the businesses they're serving. Yeah. And it fits in perfectly to what we're talking about because- these folks, instead of saying, well, you know, you can get an upgrade on your software when we issue a new one, right? There's a new iPhone every September. Yeah. Yes. Well, this is yes. CICD. Continu continu con pardon me. Continuous improvement is you get a new phone every month, right? You just, you keep making yes. tweaks and you keep giving people new chances to grow, grow closer together, to use their tools better, to be more efficient. So- it's a it's an interesting topic for me, Ray, and I love I love talking about this. We we could do a podcast right here. But, yes, we could. Okay, yeah, but thank you. Podcast I'll, number three. I'll stop. Right, right, exactly. Right. What does success? Right. We yeah. just touch on all the topics we're going to talk about <laughs> right. in future episodes. Right. We're making we Mark's making table of content. Yeah, exactly. Right. This right. is a, that's exactly right, Ray. There's literally a list behind me on a whiteboard, and your yeah. and your notes are going up there. So yes. don't worry. <laughs> So that that's beautiful, man. I, I and so let let's take that you know that concept and, and bring it home, you know, kind of to the to the heart a bit, right? Like yep. you know, back from the organization maybe to to closer to home. You know, you you teach on this topic of of present moment leadership, and so you know, talk to us a little bit about what you mean by that. Oh, absolutely, um, present moment leadership is in the present moment is where we lead ourselves is where we intersect with god and god's will and how we can lead and influence others so we make choices i referred to this a bit earlier just to plant that word and i want to just emphasize we make choices decisions in the present moment it's not in the past that's gone and the future hasn't happened yet so that whole idea of reinforcing in the present moment is where we make our choices. And in that present moment, we have minimal stress because our stress guys comes from worry or concern about the future or regret or disappointment about the past. But right now it's neutral. So what am I going to choose? Mm. Yeah. And, and so, man, as I, <laughs> Like I, I hear you, <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah. So I think where I get caught up is, um, you know, when it doesn't seem as though it's a conscious decision to be made in the present moment, right? My, my, my right. mouth just opens and words come out and it's called the gumball machine effect. Yeah, yeah, and and I'm I'm not, you know, consciously focused on James 119 and being, you know, uh sl quick to listen and slow to speak, right? Right. Uh, like right. um and, and so, you know, I think that resonates with me with big decisions. Right. Right, when I think about that, mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay. It's it's the small stuff, right? It's the it's the it's the. I yeah. love that's why I love the word moment in there, 
because it's literally moment by moment. You know, what does it look like to make a decision every time I open my mouth? Oh, man. Like, yes. You know, (laughs) yeah. Well, well, that requires a discipline I don't understand. Well, well, and that is a dis- you hit it. I was going to answer or add. It is a discipline. It's a habit. It's a it's a muscle that um, you know I we you know need to strengthen and be aware of that. And um, again, we can talk a little bit more about how we can do that. But well, yes. l- let's do that. I mean, yeah. I, we're here now. Okay. Like, like ju- let's let's <laughs> let's dive right into that because. <laughs> Man, I need some help. <laughs> oh, right. And right. Ray, there's no charge for the counseling, by the way. So Okay. <laughs> yeah, in fact, all this right. may never get aired. This is really about Sarge <laughs> and all his baggage. Okay, we're now transitioning to personal coaching. Right, right. right. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> there's usually an upcharge for that on, on, on Ray, right. Ray, Ray's laundry uh, list. Oh, exactly. So, um, you know, I think about again, kind of a little tool, if you will, the idea of stop, challenge, choose. You know, it's that discipline to in that moment, you know, carpe diem, seize the day, carpe punctum is seize the moment. In that moment, whether it's traffic, spilled milk, a voicemail, an email, whatever that moment is, the alarm clock in the morning, um, you know, whatever that is, being able to just pause, to stop, to stop. And that only needs to be a moment. Okay. It doesn't need to be, I need to think about this and ponder it for an hour, or I need to journal about it. It's a moment. Mm-hmm. Just take a breath, you know, 30 seconds, whatever that is. And then challenge. And how I like to think about challenge is wisdom. Okay. What's our wisdom? First of all, from heaven, Okay, from God, scripture, what's our wisdom based on our past experience? And what's our wisdom based on who we want to be? Okay, what's our mission? How do we want to show up in our various roles and identities in our life? Okay, and if you're not clear about that, that's obviously going to be a challenge. Right. Right. Yeah. And then once I have that, then I choose. So stop, however momentarily that is, challenge your thinking because. Again, a lot of negative thinking. I'll tell you, you know, while Kaizen is a beautiful philosophy, Kaizen has a dark side, okay? Because that notion of continuous improvement puts a lot of pressure, can put a lot of pressure. You know, one of my, we talked about successes earlier, not so successful. Um, You know, another one is, you know, I lost my job with American Express. I was being relocated at the end of 2002. Um, Looking back, that was one of the best key moments of my life because it ended up causing me or, you know, leading me down the path of starting Kaizen. Mm. But in that moment, okay, that self-talk of not good enough, okay, what are you going to do? How are you going to provide for your family? You haven't looked for a job for 20 years. Are you relevant, et cetera, et cetera. So that's that's the dark side, okay, of continuous improvement is getting into that trap of not being good enough, okay? Mm. So we want to challenge, back to stop, challenge, choose, challenge that thinking that shows up a lot for me, okay? I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not this. Um, And no, I challenge that again with spiritual wisdom, okay? Spiritual wisdom and experience, and then choose my response. Aligned, aligned with the vision and mission of who we're called to be. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful, man. The the messages that we hear, I mean, I'm listening to you, you know, not good yes. enough, right? Like that is so key. And I'm thinking of listeners that maybe, you know, haven't been to a, you know, a, a marked men phase one weekend experience or, you know, aren't clear on, you know, their, their mission or their anti-mission, but, but maybe, maybe that's a good place to start is in that moment where things don't go so well, right? What are the messages? What are the messages that that you're hearing that I'm right. hearing? And that man, that really resonates with me. Definitely. Well, and yeah, and um, oh, I just, you know, it's it's to have that clarity about who we want to be in marked men, and obviously in other things, getting clear about who you want to be. You know, my four key roles when I state my mission statement: husband, father, grandfather, 
and a servant. You know, servant is where my work shows up and my ministry shows up. Mm. You know, who do I want to be? What's my identity in that? And if that's weak, okay, if that's weak, it's going to be difficult, okay, to make choices aligned with that, mm. okay? Um, so that's just so powerful to have that vision that draws my reality, my current reality towards that. But if that's weak, I'm going to stay stuck in my current reality, in my current thinking, if you will. Mm -hmm. Sarge, this ties so neatly to our episode three. I mean, I'm going to go back. So Ray, if nothing changes, you'll be episode 24. And oh, we're coming gosh, up on one of my favorite numbers. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> winner, winner, that's winner. Awesome. winner. Yeah, that's how many grandkids you're going to have. No. <laughs> yes. um, but before I, I'll digress again, Ca yeah. we talked about caving up. What what men do to when they're not seeking the light, when they aren't sure of who they are, when they don't know what their next steps should be. The voices in their heads are, "You're not good enough. You're so broken. God couldn't love you. Right. People couldn't love you, etc." And that's where we're stuck. And we don't have enough time to go all the way into it, but let's the three of us agree. The catalyst to take you from the spot where you're stuck, that I'm not good enough spot, or I'm in, in the dark in my cave, it's Jesus, period. Yes. That, without that part of this equation, it just doesn't work. There's nothing the world can provide you, in my opinion, to yeah. get us from there to here. Yeah. And here is in the light. Yeah. And well, and exactly. I, I was thinking of that too, because the caves we so so back in episode three, we talked about these different caves, right? Yep. The cave of apathy, yep. the cave of et cetera, et cetera. Yep. And and as Ray's talking about present moment leadership, I'm thinking about the opposite of that. Exactly. Right? I'm thinking about myself in the times where I'm not leading myself or others, or not I'm not in the moment. I'm being I'm 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 reacting out of fear, which <laughs> happens to be a, a pattern. Um <laughs> you know, in, in my life. And so, you know, I immediately was thinking of the cave of apathy, right? Like if, okay, if you, if you don't have clarity of your, your, you know, your, your mission, you know, why God gave you breath today, right. um, you know, but, but you're just coasting, you know, you're just, you're just coasting through life and, and, and every interaction and every engagement and, and not uh, present, right? and and alert and and sensitive to what's happening right in in that moment um right you know things aren't going to go so now high. i was going to say chances, definitely aren't going to change chances of success aren't high ray when i read the outline that you and sarge put together for this yeah. i saw i saw the three steps in that tool and stop yeah. for me really resonated because i'm currently working through holding thoughts captive yeah that's a discipline I struggle with so much. And that's what stop meant to me. I yeah. got to grab this thought and hold it. Yeah. Right. Yes. Well, yes. It, interestingly, you know, I was just talking to, uh, to somebody about the concept of reframing. Mm. And I don't know if, Oh yeah. Uh, are you, are you familiar with no, that? No, I use that word a lot. Yes. Okay. So that I'm you can go down there if you want for a minute, but I'll let you yeah. talk and I'd like to talk about that for a minute. Yeah. Well, so here's my, well, I'd love your thoughts. So my, my, this is a new concept to me, but man, it is, first of all, it's an enormously challenging for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to practice. No, not, I'm not trying. I'm practicing it. Yeah. I'm Good. practicing it. <laughs> and and what my it is coach, my coach light just went off. Anytime I'm coaching and I hear a try word yep. or I don't have time, I push back. So, yes. Well done. Well, you know why? Because you've coached me before, Ray. And 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 so if it were anybody else that we were interviewing, I probably wouldn't have stopped and corrected myself. Mm -hmm. But but uh so so but reframing. So I I, I take take the 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 thought really and take myself, remove myself from it and almost picture it out in front of myself as, as, as being like separate and distinct from so that I can, I can, you know, I can see it. I can look at it, you know, cause otherwise it's just kind of swirling around in my, in my head. So I don't know, that's sort of my probably really poor way of describing reframing, but Ray school, school us. Yeah. I mean, what are your thoughts? on? I, 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 I... <laughs> Let me uh, let me add some light or some some some. Again, I'm a tool guy. Yes, so that really helps me. It helps with discipline. You know, we have you know exercise equipment to help us get stronger. We've got marked men and many marked men. You know that the whole ongoing process helps us get stronger. Anyway, so imagine kind of two paths, if you will. 
the path of fear, lesser self, scarcity, et cetera. That's the fear part. We've talked about that a little bit. So when we have those key moments, we're often, again, unconscious, and we resist reality. We push back, and then we want to blame and disown our ability to choose. We have no direction or minimal direction and vision, and then that leads us to reacting in fear. Mm-hmm. On the other side, okay, the path of our higher self on mission, okay, abundance, we're awake, we're aware, and we embrace reality. I'm going to pause on that particular part because we do not control reality, okay? There's things that happen that are absolutely outside of our control. But we, when we're in, quote, present moment leadership and are strong and healthy and conscious, embrace it. This is happening to me right now. I may not have chosen it. Often I don't. Okay. I may not have wanted to lose my job. I may not have wanted this health diagnosis. I may not want the pandemic. I may not want, you know, this cancellation, whatever it is, but I embrace it. That's the pause moment. That's the stop moment. And then we understand we all have free will, the exercise or the ability and responsibility to exercise and make choices. And we make choices aligned with our vision and act with integrity. Mm -hmm. So back to reframing. One of the things I've really strengthened recently, and again, it's been throughout my whole life, but early on when those negative key moments happen, okay, and I'm kind of on the scarcity side of the equation, my self-talk gets reinforced like, see, there you go again. Mm. You suck. You're not good enough. You know, you're, you always make the wrong disor- choices. Mm. I mean, all of that negative stuff, and I would fear making a mistake. Yeah. And the reframing then, because we can take a key moment and look at, kind of step away from what happened, Look at it objectively and go, how could I have reframed that? What would it look like if I embraced that reality? What would it look like if I exercised responsibility? What choices would I make? What else could be going on? Because we take our self-talk as the truth, and it's often not the truth. And that's where the deceiver gets in there and loves to kind of muck around with us, okay? So if we change that and reframe it and go, I made a mistake. I'm a human. Okay, what can I learn from this? How can I reframe this? Even get excited about it and celebrate that I have the opportunity to get better. I have the opportunity to learn from this, to Kaizen this, okay, to continuously improve. So I replay the scenario, okay, and I got several in my mind that I go back to over and over, just small things in my life that I would replay that, especially when my boys were teenagers, right. okay? Didn't make always the best choices, anger, frustration, et cetera. But now I see myself in that moment making a different choice and then go, that's like me. So next time, you know, in that moment, okay, we may not make the best choice. There's this little poem I like to share. It's about the hole in the sidewalk. And we walk down our our streets every day, our day every day. And we have these key moments, which are holes in the sidewalk. And we pretend we don't see them and we fall in. We go, who the heck is responsible for this? Who put this hole here? What the heck, God? What the heck, manager? What the heck, wife? You know, what's going on here? And we walk almost blind. And then the, the reframing part, the growth part, is when I can see that hole in the sidewalk. Now, trust me, men. You will, you will still fall in. I will see it, but still fall in because yes. that's a habit. Yeah, That's a habit. But at least I saw it. That is the moment of transformation. I now see it. Think of marked men, guys, you know, how, how we help men to see, okay, that hole they've been falling in. Once you see it, you can now get out, okay? Yep. And next time in the future, you can make different choices. All right, you got me fired up. So, there you go. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> no, so helpful, man. So so rich. I mean, there's so much there. And thank you for for you know taking us down that road. It it yeah. is so for me, it's so clear and so present and so applicable. So I'm really I'm I'm so with you. <laughs> so with you. Um yeah. Can I can I can I give you a you know like a just another passionate component that I think is so 
important that I've again learned. Yes. It's this notion of detachment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A lot of our challenges, a lot of my challenges, okay, my frustrations, fears, etc., is because I can become attached to my will. Okay. I'm attached to what I think is best. I have three C's that I struggle with control, certainty, and clarity. I want to know exactly what's going to happen. I want to know what my calendar is going to be in November. Okay. And I don't want anybody to change it. I mean, I, I just am, can be so attached to that notion of certainty. Okay. And so I've learned again over the years to adopt more of a principle of detachment mm-hmm. or active indifference, not passive indifference, but active. I'm actively indifferent. I go through the day, my life with a sense of wonder, okay? Not expectation. I wonder what's going to happen to me today. I wonder how this podcast is going to go. I wonder, okay? Once I have expectations and get attached to them, then all of a sudden we're disappointed because those expectations weren't met. And then we go down that path again of woe is me, I suck, fear, scarcity, et cetera. So I want to Again, I riff a little bit on how important it is to to remain detached and just allow that present moment leadership, the moment we lead ourselves, that intersection of God's will and go, huh, this is my will, but God, let's connect here. What's your will? And Mm -hmm. I'll embrace your will. Okay. It doesn't mean I don't want to have my will or some of my expectations, but I interconnect. I integrate that. And that brings that peace and contentment right, in let's, that present moment. Boom. Got it. <laughs> Let, let's keep going there because what we do on the podcast often is always talk about practical tools, right? Because the, our, okay. our, our listeners, I'm guessing at this stage, are like, this is beginning to make sense, but self-leadership is, is an art, right? I, I don't think that's, that's a scientific term. So help, help us understand what are some of the key components that really will help men and women listening lead themselves well? Oh, great question. Um, and again, like my, like, okay, where, how do I pick? <laughs> yeah, well, you t- well, well, he did. I mean, he, t- he touched <laughs> well, he, on, he started there. He touched on, at no, the active- there's a couple things. Yeah. I, you know, first thing I just trust my gut here. First thing I mentioned it, but I'm, I'm going to maybe talk a little bit deeper about it is absolutely importance of defining who you want to be. What's your mission? What's your godly mission? Yeah. Um, how do you and God co-create? What does that look like in your various roles? Gosh, you know, back in the day, Stephen Covey, Seven Habits, we didn't have iPads. Uh, <laughs> you know, we had uh, day planners and, you know, Covey had this, you know, the seven habits, yes. different roles in your life. I mean, that's that's still so vital that if I don't have that, and again, I co- co-create that with God. It's not about me, but it's co-creating that with our Lord. In terms of who do you want me to be in that? And once we define that, that then leads to where we started today is success. You know, success is really, you know, being aligned with God's will. That may be a a teacher or a a minister or a pastor or, you know, leading a, a hedge fund or whatever it may happen to be. I mean, it's got all kinds of shapes and sizes, but when it's co created with God, then that's success. Okay, so having that North Star, having that piece that draws you forward and you're clear about that, then goes into the tool of the stop, challenge, choose all those key moment things. Stop, challenge. Am I looking at scarcity or abundance? Okay, what am I doing here? Am I seeing my ability to respond? Am I embracing that reality? And then choose those responses. And then that third tool I briefly introduced, I'll just reinforce that, is what I call, you know, what's working and what needs work to reinforce when you make good choices. Yes, that's like me. Okay. I'm trying to lose weight and I did not have dessert. Okay. I'm trying to lose weight and I ate a healthy meal. Bam. That's like me. Okay. Now, when we make a mistake or do something that, you know, we want to correct again, embracing that as, okay, this is an opportunity to celebrate getting better. I can make a different choice. And what does that look like? And again, it's moment to moment to moment. It's one inch at a time. And again, it takes so much discipline and patience 
But those are three tools I would highlight that we've talked about. And I thank you. And, and it's and it's helpful to, to reiterate it. But I, for me, when I, I'm listening to you, and, and we haven't talked a lot, let's be honest. Yeah. I, the word trust is just screaming at me. That's exactly what I just, yep, I just wrote the because same thing. Because yeah. for me, it's stop, trust. Challenge, trust. <laughs> Choose, trust. <laughs> yep. There's a thread of trust. Right, required. really. That, yeah. that thread is without Whew. a deep trust in God's ultimately good plan for me. Yeah. I see so many chances yep. to jump off. Stop. Okay, see ya. Left. You know, I'm making a left I, and I'm gone. You know, because I'm tangential. I, I, I'm just, I want to lose weight. Take a left. Well, re, you know, I got to have, got to have haagen you know, whatever. I'm, uh, so I'm just making uh, up, yeah. but, but Ray, for me, trust is, is, is such an important component. Can you just peel the onion back on that for us a little bit where trust fits in to be all in with self-leadership? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, and I'm going to, you know, for me, trust is also, again, almost a synonym in this context is faith because mm. it's trusting and having faith. Okay, that God's will, God wants his best for me. God's allness, okay? He's all good. He's all faithful. He's all loving. You know, he's all knowing. And if we embrace and have faith and trust in God's allness, why wouldn't we follow his will? Sure. Okay, it's crazy and incredibly difficult, okay? Again, that's why that's so important in the present moment, leadership, that intersection. And again, challenge my thinking. If this is what's happening, do I trust? Yes, I do. Do I have the faith? Walk by faith, not by sight, okay? Detach from what I want. Trust that God because you know what? He's all-knowing, all-loving, and, you know, all that, basically. So yeah. that's where that connects. And then, you know, again, having faith that God will give me everything that I need. I can do all things through him. Okay. Yeah. He can do all things for him. I, I had a band on my, on my wrist that had that scripture, Philippians 413, I believe it is. It is. I could do all things through him. And I gave it to one of my men in P3 because um, he did some work. And I go, you need this brother. But yeah. I think of that all the time when I'm in that moment of, again, challenging. I can do all things yeah. in him who strengthens me. And then choosing that response because I trust and have faith that God has my best. Yeah. And this, this ties in so well to some of the topics we've been talking about, Mark. I mean, yeah. particularly, I, I mean, there is a thread throughout our episodes of the topic of surrender. Yep. Um, as well as, I mean, we just dropped an episode on, on uh, a, our bias toward action and the three of us on this call right here, <laughs> boy, uh, you know, you know, that's like, we're the, the poster children. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, when Ray was talking earlier about productivity, you know, just even in the, the beginning, yes. I was at my heart kind of, I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, which is why when you talk about indifference, I'm like indifference, that, that's, <laughs> What's that that's mean? a terrible thing to be right. <laughs> yeah. Like, but so thank you for, for helping me look at see indifference in a different light, but this, this, you know, this idea of trust and, and its impact yeah. on our ability to lead ourselves well, um, you know, that there's surrender required. And, and so, yeah. you know, it's, it's this, there's, <laughs> it's interesting, man. I'm like the two paths and I'm looking at surrender and we talk a lot about bias toward action and, you know, how do these two heart postures, you know, coexist yeah. and contribute to our ability to lead well? It's a great question. No, it's a, it's a, it is a great question and a challenging question because, uh, you know, I, I'm, uh, I love to be productive. I have a plan every day, you know, yeah. and you know, um, I want to get stuff done I, my calendar, my to-do list, et cetera. So, um, when I think of surrender, I, again, I go back to that notion of detach or to submit, to let go of. Mm -hmm. Um, so we act and then submit. And I think it's important to, look at, we, we must take action, okay? We must make the first step out of the boat like Peter did, okay? Nobody pushed him out of the boat. None of the apostles threw him into the lake, you know, and then he stood on the water. He had to step out in faith. Mm -hmm. This morning's scripture, this morning's gospel, again, I'm 
up early a little bit, you know, preparing. And it's one of my favorite parables, the parable of the sower and the seed. Yeah. And, you know, the seed is is indifferent. It's, you know, we all got that, those opportunities, the seeds thrown out there with abandonment yeah. and we're the soil. And so for us to be fertile soil, we got to do something with that seed. We got to water it yep. and, and, and cultivate it and do all those things. So again, it's, it's taking action first. So I'm all about productivity. I love your notion. I'm all in on that bias towards action, but then it's also to pause, if you will, to detach, to surrender and make sure that I'm walking alongside God, yeah. that we're doing those things. Amen. And so, one of the things I think about, oh, go ahead. No, no, that's okay. You keep going. One of the things just to kind of, kind of bring that around when I think about that and how challenging that is. Okay. Um, that when I act, um, without surrender, it's really becomes all about me okay? yeah. and my own there it desires, is. expectations, selfishness, et cetera. Yep. When I focus only on surrender, okay, I'm playing small. I'm burying my talent. Okay? Yes. Oh, I'm, I don't know. I may make a mistake. I may not do well, et cetera. So again, it's, it's, and you guys know this in marked men, it's that left hand and right hand. Yeah. Okay. It's both things. And we want to take action, but also be in surrender and submission to God's will. And again, I got my hands out in front of me. I'm, you know, again, that balance. But if I put them together, and how cool is that? It's like in, in a prayerful hands, that's the intersection of God's will and my will. Okay. There you action go. Action on my will. Okay. Surrender on God's will to what his is. We put them together. And in that present moment, okay, we pray. And that's where we get that peace and contentment. Yeah. That's connecting the that dots. That was good. Right. That's nice connecting the that. dots. We can use that. Yeah. <laughs> We can work. We can work with that. Abs yeah. Absolutely. No, truly. Um, man, that's really helpful to look at. You know, surrender and action through that through that lens. And I, I it's funny because I used the word coexist, but it was more thinking, how do they? And it's like, no, they have right. to. Right. <laughs> they have to. Yes, they do. It's not, right. It's not a how. If they don't, Let, they, well, time out. Yep. Okay, hey, coaching hat. Okay. Again, you just trigger. You said have to. I. It's like try. We get to. Um, you do. You do not have to. Well, you get to, and we choose to. I'm gonna. That's so important because the have to mentality is very much mm. our lesser self. Yes. We do things because we tell ourselves we have to. Yep. Okay. We have to. No, we choose to, or we get to. We said at the beginning, Sarge. You said I got a lot of stuff going on. This topic's really timely for me. Blah blah blah. Again, if we take that posture of have to. Oh, it feels heavy. Yes. So when we take the posture of this is real, it's still heavy. Yeah. And I'm going to choose to carry that. I'm going to choose to go into my day because I want to be my very best, even though I know it's going to be heavy. Entirely, entirely different mindset. It is. Much great. more of a growth mindset great, than fixed. Great coaching. Thank you for stopping me and jumping in. Hey, listen, I'm human. I made a mistake and I'm going to figure out what I can learn from this. I'm going to really take right. a look at that. I appreciate that. I'm going to replay this moment. <laughs> Good. Uh, we're not editing that. I was out. just going to say, this will not be on the editing room floor. Uh, no, no, no. This is, this is, uh, oh man. So good. So good. Um, yeah, going back earlier, I mean, you talked about key moments and we, we, we're going to wrap up soon. Um, but you know, the, as we look at present moment leadership and, and, you know, these, these key moments, again, I, I think mm -hmm. I, I, I tend to think of the bigger mile markers in our, in our story, right. In our, in our life, the, the job transitions, mm -hmm. like Ray talked about yes. the, 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 the major shifts, you know, but those aren't necessarily, they can be the key moments, but they're not all the key moments. I mean, am, am, right. am, am I right? So what are the, right? Like, how would you define, let's say a key moment? Yep. A key moment is simply a reality, which presents a challenge and demands a response. We are bombarded, if you will, with key moments all day long. Mm. When I teach about this, I often say, well, it was at a key moment, you know, raise your hand. It's like every hand in this room should be up. Because we've all had a key moment, and oftentimes it's the alarm, okay? That can be our very first key moment of the day. The alarm goes off. What do we choose to do? Do we go to snooze? Do we get up because we mm. like to exercise in the morning? 
Do we, you know, whatever, I'm not going to exercise. I mean, again, I could go through my whole day. Okay. Yep, yep. We, what do we choose to eat? What do we choose to read? Okay. Do I put on, you know, the news? Um, what am I listening to? Or what's the first thing I do? For me, it's prayer. You know, very yeah. first thing while I'm making the coffee, whatever, I'm listening to prayer. Um, and then I do the daily readings, et cetera. You know, that's my, again, these are all practices that, you know, kind of transform this theory that we're talking about into practice. Yeah. I'm strengthening that muscle. So before I get into email, before I get into all these, you know, every email is a key moment, right? Yep. Do I respond now? Do I wait? Um, I mean, we've all had emails that, I mean, like everyone's a key moment. Do I delete? You know, yeah. so key moments yeah. are simply, it's reality, guys. Yeah. It's yeah. reality. Yep. Um, and again, there are some bigger and some that are just, you know, it's our daily living. Yeah. And it is, it is, it is at the intersection. It's, it's so cool, man. It, it, yes. It's at the intersection of that surrender and action co- yeah. coexistence, right? Yeah. Like what, and you know, what keeps coming up for me, what keeps coming to mind is the lack of awareness. Like you said, the muscle that needs to yeah. be, because it's there, 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 it's, it's, you know, the, what you just talked about those, those moments throughout the day, right? What am I going to do? Am yeah. I, you know, what I really want is to go back to sleep, right? But you know, what I really need is to get to the gym. Right. Like, you know, am I really pausing, creating awareness or am I just boom, snooze? Right. Um, You know, when I when I get up, what's my first response? Do I go, you know, right to the word of God or I do I jump right into my email? Well, depends on the day. Right. Like, am, am I present and awake and aware of those key moments? Man, like. And, and it's all, again, we could go on and on, you know, another one that comes to mind that again, in my role as, as a loving, you know, devoted, faithful husband, you know, when my, I get up early, when my wife comes downstairs, do I get up out of my desk, off, out of my chair in my office or wherever I'm at and go greet her and give her a kiss in the morning? Or do I wait for her? Very simple one. Another key sure. moment. Who sure. am I at my best all day long? <laughs> and she deserves your best. All right, Ray. Yes. Um, I've I've got a last question. We do this very often, and now now you'll you'll see, and I'm sure you'll you'll be fine with this. You've got That's energy, okay. man. You you've got I, I can see sparks flying, and I'm just smiling at Sarge listening to you talk. Your voice changes when your passion meter goes up. So I, I love it. We're we're wired the same in a lot of ways, but. Since you're a guy who gets fired up about God and his impact in our lives and showing people this path, you know, if through Kaizen, what you're talking about, what yeah. is, fi- what's next for you and, and maybe Kaizen, but what, what, what's firing you up that isn't on the outline that you want to tell our listeners, just talk to them directly. Um, it's a big key moment. <laughs> so, Go. and it's, and it's, a, and it's, and it's, and it's, it's a key um, what's again, what's the opposite of a moment? It, it, it's going to be a transition. So, you know, we've had the, the great recession, the great, whatever I call for me, the great transition, if you will. So I'm on the front end of a, probably a two to three year period of, okay, what do I do next? Um, I turned 63 earlier this week on Tuesday. Um, so it's thinking about what does that next, you know, chapter of my life look like? And um, I'm fired up about that because there's lots of possibility, lots of fun in that. Um, and there's, you know, there's some fear around that. I mean, that is a significant key moment. So mm. this whole thing that we're talking about shows up big time in terms of, you know, do I take action? Because I want certainty. I want to know what retirement looks like. <laughs> and again, you know, retirement is for me less about, okay, I'm not working, but just less you know, the human doing for me ties right into my calendar. I mean, that's the moment of truth, if you will. Mm. It's like, okay, here's everything on your calendar. And I just react to all that. So for me, quote, retirement is I want less schedule and more openness. Okay. But that whole thing is in transition. So I'm fired up about that, Mark. Um, And again, uh, I'm, I'm wrestling, you know, with that surrendering piece. And what does that look like? And how do I you know, exit that well and sure. on and on and on. So there's a whole lot of passion and okay. excitement and there's some, some trepidation a little bit because for t- what, 40 years I've been 
doing stuff. You know, that's as for many men, that's our identity, you know? Sure. So what does that, what does that look like? So, well, that's exciting. Uh, I said earlier that you and I are somewhat aligned. We're the same age. I've got you by a few months and I'm exactly where you are in terms of uh, looking wow. at what, what, what God has planned next. And yeah. it's such an exciting journey. That's all I can say. I don't want to make this about me because it's about you and it's about God, but I couldn't be more excited just like you about what God has planned next. Well, and all the, all those things, <laughs> it's a great question and it's just good awareness for me too is, all the detachment, active indifference, you know, not getting, you know, too caught up in that. And, you know, I mentioned that another tool, if you will, is just the wonder, you know, the sense of wonder. I mentioned that earlier, but I just wonder how this is going to unfold. And just holding all of that loosely is, is again, a, a big reminder to me. And that's part of that, that muscle that I'm strengthening. Mm. Makes me think of 38 special song now. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, uh, that shows how old I am. Um, yeah, well, I'm right there, man. Uh, well, yeah, let's, let's talk it. about. <laughs> no, what was let's your not. First concert, Mark. What was your first concert? Uh, Kiss. 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 Mine and... was Sticks. 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 Okay, right. Illusion tour, Iowa State Fair. Uh, I was I was in uh, Roosevelt Stadium in Jersey City, New Jersey, where I was born and raised. So it's a uh, wow. It, it's not someplace you would know, but nonetheless, here's, here's my clothes. Um, people do, I guess, because you reach the age that we are and they say, so when are you going to retire or what's your retirement plan? And I have no idea, but I right, do know one right. thing I've decided I'm going to accelerate into retirement. Amen. I'm not mm. just cruising into retirement. I'm not just going to go play golf because I don't want to, but that acceleration, I think gives me a chance to look at what God's plan is, how I fit into it, my family, my beautiful wife, and all the, and this podcast, the, the work Sarge and I are doing together in so many ways in our lives. There's so much to look forward to. Well done, because that's a choice. You know, that stop, challenge, choose, you just modeled for our listeners. Okay, stop, retirement, challenge what I'm going to do, and my choice is to accelerate. Well done. There you go. Yeah. If yeah. there's a gold star or a, like a diploma or anything, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm goal oriented. So this is great. <laughs> you, you just right. got it. He just gave it to you. That was you it? want more right. than that? Yes. You're I, not... just, I just clicked like for you. <laughs> so. Exactly. Well, speaking of clicking like, the yes. Ka Kaizen is a business, folks. So if you're listening, you want to learn more about Kaizen and you want to talk to Ray, uh, we'll make sure that we put notes uh, in the podcast Perfect. that you can do that. And we'd love for you to do the same with uh, the Foxhole symphony yeah yeah absolutely yeah. and ray i just want to thank you brother thank you so much i i just love being around you and in your presence and in any way listening and and getting coaching and and you know uh watching you model uh, so much of what we're talking about it's it's been a blessing to me for a number of years now and though we don't get to spend a lot of time together when we do um it, it always yeah. uh it's always it always brings me joy, and I'm always challenged Special. and in, uh, encouraged. So, um, yeah, I want to I want to encourage you and affirm you as you go through this next season, and, uh, and and embrace it, and embrace it, embrace the reality, and dream, and and wonder, because you and Mark um, are, are not only uh, you know uh, mentors and 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 modeling for me and, and others what that could look like, uh, but you guys have never had more to give. <laughs> You've never mm -hmm. had more. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's just so awesome that, you know, both of you are so aware and intentional about how you're going to give that away, that you're, you're mm -hmm. not coasting into retirement saying it's time for me. But what I hear from both of you is saying, you know, uh, now's, now's my time to really take a look at how I can give even more and um loaves and fishes that's so awesome yes it's yes. so awesome amen to that absolutely thank you ray thanks great to meet you yeah brothers and, and listeners great to meet you yeah it's been fun to feel i mean i've had my cup of coffee <laughs> love this chat um i love the kindred spirits in the community so blessings bless you brother and we're gonna let you go get to he's got well six, 16 almost 17 uh grandchildren <laughs> and, and so uh, he's got it's a it's a Saturday morning we're recording so it's he's a got, Saturday there's three events <laughs> there's three, a uh, game we have uh, volleyball baseball and football there oh, it is got, got 
three things today. So <laughs> there it is, Gram- <laughs> Grandpa. What do they call you? Papa Ray. Papa Ray's got got places to be. Yeah. So we we all enjoy every moment, and uh, as I'm sure I'm sure you do. And we will talk Absolutely. to you soon, brother. God bless you. All right. And uh, bless listeners, you guys. thanks for being with us in the foxhole, Mark. Yeah, bro. Thanks for being here always and having oh. having my back, man. Wouldn't be anywhere else. Love you, brother. Peace. Today, Steve and Mark had a great conversation with the owner of Kaizen Incorporated, Ray Ryder. I don't know about you, but I had to stop the podcast, open my notes app, and go back so I can write down those insightful nuggets of wisdom they shared with us. For me, I want to spend some time thinking about how they apply to my life, my walk, and my choices. I loved hearing how the principles of Kaizen were not something that were separate from God, but when they are implemented to the fullest, they are in perfect harmony with God and our God-given potential. During the talk today, I was reminded of how important it is to make a choice to trust in a God who fully encompasses everything I may ever need. And through the Stop, Challenge, Choose tool, I can bring those lies that are birthed from things like anger, deceit, fear, sadness, and shame into the light where they are exposed and swallowed up by the truth. What about you? I hope this time with us has caused you to think about how these principles and tools can be used in your own life. Remember, we always look forward to hearing from you and growing those authentic relationships with the people we serve through this podcast. Lord, I am so grateful that you are here with us in this mission and for the hearts of these men who shared with us today, hearts that desire to follow you and point others to you. Thank you for our listeners, Lord. You know each and every one of them, their circumstances, and exactly what they need. Please meet them right where they are, touch their hearts, and reveal yourself to them like only you can do. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's episode, please share it and invite others to the Foxhole. You can find us wherever you download your favorite podcast. Be sure to subscribe so you know when new episodes drop and please rate us and comment there too, as it'll help us get found by others who could benefit. Find, follow, and like us on your go-to social media networks by searching Foxhole Symphony or visit foxholesymphony.com to make it super easy to find us. Drop us a line with feedback, questions, topic requests, who knows? Maybe you'll be a guest on a future episode. In the meantime, prepare to move, embrace discomfort, and just be you.